Another media type you can enter into a container field is a QuickTime movie. We have a cute little movie from Claris, which is the company who owned FileMaker. It's actually the same company. They just changed their name. And it's an old one because FileMaker Incorporated is in the company who's developed FileMaker for a long time. But it's the one and only TV commercial that Claris ever created. And it aired, I think, once, and somebody made a QuickTime movie. And I've saved it over the years uh, because I thought it was cute, and it's a, it actually is a cute little commercial. It's also small, so it allows us to put a QuickTime movie on here and not put a ton of stuff on your work files. And this is an important time to talk about your work files because all of these files that I'm using in these tutorials are provided in the work files. So many people contact me and say, oh, can I have that file or why didn't you give us that file? Well, it's there. The work files are there. And you may not be as interested in a picture of me or whatever I might provide as far as pictures, you know, this Claris movie or things like that, but we'll eventually be providing graphics and all kinds of things that you can use to enhance your files. So find that work files. In fact, one of the most important things is the start and end folders inside the work files. They contain the beginning of the file that we're building, the beginning of that chapter, and also at the end. So you can check your work. Or you can start off on a chapter at any point you want and have the actual file that working on rather than trying to guess what we've done. It's, it's right there. So those can really help you out. So find those work files real quickly. So we're going to switch to another record, click into the media field, and choose Insert QuickTime. We're going to locate the fm-add.move, which again is in your work files. And notice that there is no option for filters or storing as a reference. This is actually more akin to importing this as a file. And it only only has the option of storing as a reference. And one of the reasons is probably because QuickTime files can generally be pretty big. This one's, I believe, 1.1 uh, megabytes, as you can see here. And this is a pretty small one. So they don't offer the option of putting it directly in your FileMaker file because it's just going to bloat it. Even though FileMaker can handle 8 terabyte files, you still don't want to bloat it if you don't need to because then it makes it less portable. So let's go ahead and click OK to put that in there. You'll see it takes a second and you have all the controls there. We just hit play. And of course there's no sound here because I'm not playing it, but there is a cute little uh, music going on there. And it's just a dog chasing the tail because they're saying, don't chase your tail, use FileMaker instead. So that was pretty much it. It was a low budget film, but I thought it uh, had a lot of appeal. And so you have all the controls here. We can pause it. We can move it around just like any QuickTime movie. See at the end all the quotes about how great it is. There's a dog barking finally. So it's a great little thing. And you actually can go into layout mode too. Click on this media field and go into the inspector and use all these graphic options to change how this QuickTime behaves. So you can reduce, enlarge, all that kind of stuff. So all these options are available there for you. Let's go back into browse mode. And we're going to go back to the media field. And we're going to go to the next record click in there and actually what I'm going to do is double click. This will allow you to record sound directly into this field if you want to. We'll hit cancel. Now if you don't have that option you can't double click or you go to insert and sound is dimmed that means that your Windows machine doesn't have a sound card and you need to make sure you have that to do this. So either insert sound or double click or you can even copy and paste your sound into this field if you want. In fact, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put sound to make their container feel really small and hide it on the layout. And then when somebody clicks a button, it'll make a special sound. Or when they open the file, it'll make a special sound. And it's very easy to do that with scripting to play what's in there. You can actually, with a script, play a QuickTime movie, too, if you want. There's all kinds of capabilities. So we'll eventually get to scripting so you can see how to automate things. But for right now, we're not ready for that. We're just doing the manual operation here. Now. If you're on Windows, you'll also have an option here called Object. That's for Olay. And so you can insert Olay objects into a container field as well. Now I also want to show you how you can insert a FileMaker file. I just want to make it clear that any file on your hard drive can be entered in here. And I'm going to use the Contact Management. And the reason for that is because this is the file that we created at the very beginning of this tutorial to show you kind of what the starter solutions were all about. So if you don't have it, I'm not going to provide it on the work files, but so if you don't have it, you can go ahead and create a new starter solution and, and insert a FileMaker file. But it's really just to prove a point. When I go ahead and insert this, that's actual FileMaker file. 
I can export the field contents. If it's a reference, I can double click on it and open it. So you can put any kind of file into a container field. Just don't forget that. You can make it a really cool knowledge base.